Hello my wonderful peeps and all of you new followers who have decided to join us after the last video which has done extremely well so yay! Some of you found that video a bit depressing because of all the empty streets and closed down shops and restaurants and I totally get that. Uh, we obviously all want to share this wonderful town with more people and I have some good news for you because the lockdown is easing and we're starting to see a lot of the local businesses opening up a lot more and a lot of the rules are kind of relaxing and this weekend we have decided to go out and see what we can actually do now safely. <laughs> so yeah, follow us on our little weekend adventure as we find out what is actually allowed to do and how we are allowed to have fun safely in Edinburgh. So first up, and for all of people this is going to be the most important thing, pubs. On the 15th the pubs actually got a green light to be open even indoors so that was a bit later than in England because Scotland is kind of playing it safe you know letting England <laughs> open up and kind of watching if that's gonna go horribly wrong while we're here like eh, let's just wait a little bit a little bit more little tiny bit uh, but it seemed like it worked fairly well so yeah Scotland got a green light for pubs as well but from what I've seen, a lot of the pubs don't actually feel like they're quite ready for it yet because obviously to open they have to bring a lot of new kind of safety features and rules and a lot of them uh, so far have decided to wait it out a tiny bit. What has uh, blossomed though is beer gardens and we have visited two to kind of document it for you guys for this video. One of them is our local Belfield Brewery which is a kind of a tiny little brewery in Abbey Hill. They special in gluten-free beer so if that's what you need for your tum to be healthy uh, go check them out You can actually book a table through their online system. Uh, I think that you pay £10 deposit and then you can basically drink through those £10 for two hours and obviously you can drink more than just for £10, obviously. Uh, they have nice little booths for larger groups and tiny little table things barrels for smaller groups and it's really chill, it's really nice. They are keeping it very safe with all those like full face coverings, shields very sci-fi and very safe and hygienic. The second beer garden we have visited is in the Holyrood Distillery Courtyard and you know if, if you've been around this channel for a bit you know that we made a little video about the Holyrood Distillery. They can't really do tours now uh, but they decided to open up their kind of parking lot slash courtyard to drinking beer which is super nice and you can not only get beer there you can also get some cocktails you know they make their own gin as well so you can try their gins and they also have some food they actually have pizza from the pizza geeks We really like Pizza Geeks because they make these kind of like nine inch like single serve pizzas. I always think I can't eat a whole pizza on my own but theirs are very like reasonably sized and they're about like seven, eight pounds and super fresh and you can have it with some of that nice beer. You actually don't have to slash cannot book a place in the Holyrood Distillery beer but they are open from 12 every Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday until kind of later in the night. So if you really want to have a space there, I would recommend going early in the day. We went basically at like 12.20 or something and they were still mostly empty. So now that I've mentioned food, you can imagine that street food is something that's doable. Even though some restaurants are now also open indoors, a lot of them are not. And also a lot of people just don't feel safe to go and eat indoors. We don't. We haven't eaten anywhere inside in like what, like five months now. And um, I personally just do feel better 
grabbing some food and eating it somewhere in the park or even in our car and covering our car in mustard. Simon is kind of mad at us for doing that. So one cool new place that has opened recently is called The Neighborhood and it's kind of on top of the Waverly Mall. So that's uh, on the east end of Princess Street. Um, kind of during the festival you usually do get some street food and drinks there too. I'm pretty sure that this is actually organized by the people who are often in charge of all of these kind of like festival time street food places and now they're kind of taking advantage of um, at least being allowed to do this for the locals. Um, you can get tacos there from El Cartel, our favorite place, I think our favorite food place anywhere in the world ever. There's a small kind of like astroturfed sitting space behind the stalls. Um, you will find it no problem. Uh, they open I think between Wednesday and Sunday and they're open from 11 a.m. Uh, so again if you come there kind of around early lunchtime you're definitely gonna find a place to sit and also if it's rainy and windy you will probably <laughs> likely find a place to sit because not everyone is brave enough to eat tacos when it's like 30 miles per hour gusts of wind blowing into your face. We were though, we don't mind, we will sit in any sort of weather for those El Cartel tacos. And also the Edinburgh legend of street food, the pit market down in Leith on the pit street is now reopened. We went there last weekend when they still were open just for takeaway, but from next weekend on they also have some sit-in seating that you can book in advance. You'll find amazing gelato from Mumbai Gelato. I think that they do soft serve uh, ice cream sandwiches now as well. Nom nom nom, that's what we had. It was cappuccino. No, it was coffee flavored. No cappuccino, it was like straight up just the you know, proper coffee. <laughs> this is the new normal, honey. And how it works when you visit these places is that you basically give them your name and your phone and they enter you into the track and trace program which means that like if later on they find out that like someone who visited was uh, identified as COVID positive and they kind of overlapped with you time wise when you were visiting like on the same day or so someone will call you and tell you well now you can't leave the house for a fortnight so in a way I think that uh, a more realistic fear is when you visit places like this that someone will tell you to isolate for 14 days rather than actually catching it. But um, I mean, that kind of makes you think twice. So, you know, stay safe. Yeah, stay safe. And, you know, don't just go have surf and turf for nothing. Only have surf and turf if it really like helps you with your lockdown depression. And of course, for quite some time, all the non-essential shops have been open as well, uh, which is why we went to Princess Street to kind of document that for you, to uh, let you see how busy it can get on weekends. Uh, yeah, let's go there now. Let's see all the, all the queues for all the non-essential stuff.
And of course, if you want to visit one of these, uh, keep in mind that there's a limitation for how many people can actually be in at one time. And also, whenever you go indoors, you have to wear a mask. So that's now a rule. I think that by the point this goes out, it's going to be a rule in England as well. But we were first here in Scotland. And obviously, most of Europe was actually first, like three months ago. But I'm really glad and it makes me feel a lot safer knowing that people have to wear face coverings on uh, public transport and in shops. And if you want any inspiration on where you can get super cool face coverings from, let's do a little fashion show! And there you have it! I think that the last thing that I wanted to mention is museums and galleries, which also got a green light on the 15th, but most of them are still closed. Uh, it seems like they basically decided that um, they do need some extra time, so even though the government said that it's technically safe, they've decided against it, which, you know, again, I support that decision. There's no need to open more stuff than needs to be open. Okay, and that was our little update on how Edinburgh is slowly crawling out of the lockdown. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and click the tiny bell if you like this video. Also, let me know in the comments below if you think that Edinburgh is being way too slow with the lockdown easing or maybe you think that we're being too fast and furious and it's just gonna all spiral out of control. I'm really curious what you think, especially with you who are watching this from a different country, because I know that different countries have very different perspectives on how to handle this health crisis. And um, I would love to know what your country did and if you think that it did it right or wrong. Yeah, let's just have a, have a conversation about how to fix this down in the comment section. And one last thing, as always, if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's uh, kakibot or kakiblog, depending on if you're interested more in my illustrations or in the photos that kind of document my um, fairly interesting life here in Edinburgh. Okay guys, I hope you're doing great, you're staying safe and everyone's happy and your family's doing well and I will see you soon. Bye. Just like sometimes I'm just like, talking and I'm hoping that something smart will come out and then it doesn't. <laughs> well... <laughs>